Okay, we're going to do the right section of things. So identify the function family or families, so there could be more than one answer. Describe by the given characteristics and choose from those four options. Number one, the graph of this function family has a minimum. So the only ones that have a minimum is where there is a, a turn, say from like an increasing to decreasing. And in that regard, that's going to be the quadratic and the absolute value. Those are the only two options. The graph of the family that is decreasing over the entire domain. So those is where your eyes are just continuing to decrease if there's no turn. And that's just going to be either a linear or a exponential graph. Okay. So decreasing throughout the entire domain. Up in the quadratic, that's where we had a minimum for a U-shaped, and that's where we had a minimum for um, a V-shaped absolute value. Number three, it has an increasing interval and a decreasing interval and forms a U-shape. Well, as soon as I see that keyword of U-shape, I start thinking quadratic, and that's the case. So it's increasing and then decreasing. The only way that happens is if it looks like that. If it's increasing and then it is decreasing. Graph the function family does not have an absolute max or min and is a smooth curve. So no maxes and mins. So it can't be quadratic, it can't be absolute value. And it's a curve. So that is a exponential. There's exponentials can look a whole bunch of different ways, okay? It's a smooth curve, and um, there is no max or mins. The graph of this family has an, does have an absolute max and min, and is made up of straight lines. So that's my absolute value. Okay, I should have wrote exponential here, and this is my absolute value. Two lines to make up then that absolute value V-shaped graph. The graph of this function family contains straight lines and does not have a max or min. So then just a single line, and that is linears, either increasing, decreasing, or constant. Okay, we asked to do the stretch. So let me go find the stretch now. <clears throat> Write an equation and sketch a graph that has a minimum in quadrant four, is continuous, and is an absolute value. Okay. So this is a little bit of gaming, playing around with the graphing calculator to see where I can get it to move into quadrant four. So to create that graph, I'm just going to create something, uh, and I'm going to go plug it into my calculator to see if it matches up. But it's got to be an absolute value. So I'm going to do, say, maybe absolute value of x minus 1. Let's just go see what that does. So I'm going to switch this over to my calculator. And I'm going to type in, so give me a second to bring up my calculator. Now there's more than one answer here, but it's got to be absolute value. And I suggested x minus 1. So let's see what that minus 1 does. Is it going to be in quadrant 4? Okay, not quite. It is over here on the x-axis, but I wanted to get to down here where quadrant 4 is located. So that's kind of there. So... Let's see here. Let's manipulate some. Um, <clears throat> let's make that a minus one. Let's try like a minus three. Mm, okay, so it moved it further to the right, but I want to move it up and down. So moving everything inside, changing things inside doesn't seem to change it. Let's put in something outside. Let's go with the plus three. Oh, plus three moved it out. Okay, moved it up into quadrant one, but it moved it up. So I want to move it down into quadrant four. So maybe if I change it from plus three, say, to a minus three, boom, there we go. So this is in quadrant four. It is continuous. It is absolute value. That all looks good. So this is in quadrant four. Let's go back to the answer. And I came up with actually x minus three and then outside of that, a minus three. And what we got then was the minimum in quadrant four. And it continues like that, but that minimum is in quadrant four then, okay? Make sure you know your four 
quadrants. Okay, last one here is review number two. Let's take this equation down below. Oops, that's not number two, that's number three. Determining whether each graph represents a function and a decreasing function. Okay, so then let's go with uh, number two. This is an increasing function. Your eyes are going up. This is a exponential, actually. It's a continuous exponential. And this one has got decreasing first, then it's got increasing. This is what we call, again, our V-shaped graph. This is our absolute value. It is continuous. It's just nice to talk about it. And this one also has what we call an axis of symmetry right here. It's not necessary for this problem, but it's nice to just go ahead and talk about it. And that also has what we call then a minimum right down here we've been looking at. Uh, this does not have an axis of symmetry. So just a heads up there. Um, those do not. And that does not have an absolute max or min. That's